This video is sponsored by MPB. So this is possibly my favorite long-ish lens of all time on the Micro Four Thirds system. Let me tell you why. This is the Olympus 40 to 150 f2.8 Pro. It's a blooming beaut. It's quite chonky for a Micro Four Thirds lens, but if you compare it to a full frame equivalent, it's probably pretty much compact. I took this lens recently on safari to Kenya and got tons of great photos with it. And yes, this video is probably just an excuse to share more of them. It's not, it's a great lens, honestly. Stick around, it's a great lens. First of all, it's sharp pretty much whichever aperture you throw at it and whether you're at the long end or the wide end. I've found this lens to be exceptionally sharp throughout everything. And I'm really not one to pixel peep on this channel, as you know, because I think if, if the viewer at the end is only going to be seeing the big far away product, why pixel peep? It's just a waste of time. But with this lens, I'm going to pixel peep. Because particularly for wildlife, sometimes you do want to crop in and you need two things to effectively crop in. And that is a very, very sharp piece of glass so that all the details stack up even when you are closer in and also enough megapixels to crop in. So if you have both of those, you can really crop in a lot with this lens. I think the 40mm to 150 is a very versatile focal length. There are others that are probably a little bit more versatile, like the Lumix 35 to 100, which I shall be comparing these two a little bit later on in the video. This would give you an 80mm in full frame terms at the wide end. It's not bad, you know, if you were taking portraiture or, or you know, you needed something that was a little bit wider and a little bit zoomed, it's pretty damn versatile. When you compare that to like the 100 to 400, where you start off at 200 mil <laughs> there's not much you can do with that so you find yourself changing lenses quite often when you have longer focal lengths so this is quite versatile and there are more scenarios than you think that needs like a middle of the road zoom if you're thinking about wildlife yes having the 400 mil is stunning and i got loads of great photographs with that lens but sometimes they get closer to the jeep and then you want to sort of have a lens on your camera body because you don't want to be changing lenses in the dust if you think about concert photography, which I usually shoot with my 35 to 100 for the same reason, sometimes you do get close to the subjects or they get closer to you and you do need that wider focal length. I should also mention that this lens is internal focusing and internal zoom, so it doesn't get any bigger than that. The only thing that does make it a little bit bigger is the lens hood, which has a very nice uh, mechanism. Let me put it back on. There's so much dust on this still from Kenya. <laughs> so when I actually use this lens, I do keep the lens hood on. It's a really good design. It just kind of pops out and then you can sort of twist it and put it back in. And I really like that. It's quite similar to the 100 to 400 where you do have a little lens hood built in but then you have to remember to take this with you and screw it on. So I do prefer the way that Olympus does it because it does encourage me to use the lens hood very often. And as you can see, it came in super duper handy because there's just blooming scratches and everything all over it from when it's been rolling around in the Jeep in Kenya. Conversely, my Lumix 35 to 100 f2.8, also internal focusing, which is really nice, no lens hood. I probably lost that as I was unboxing it. <laughs> So versatility, good. Zoom, you know, it's a 300 mil in full frame terms, so it's still pretty good. There are some other lenses that I've used, like the Lumix 200 mil f2.8 prime, which are just, oh, so sharp, so beautiful, but not versatile at all, because it's a prime lens. And then you have a little bit more versatility with the Lumix 100 to 400, but it's nowhere near as sharp as 2.8. So there are pros and cons to all of these lenses and it all depends what you value versus sharpness, versatility and zoom. It's kind of one of those things where it's like you'll have a triangle, it's like pick two. You can't have three. <laughs> Look at how, let me put the lens hood down. Look at how similar they are in size. Given that this one will do 800 mil of zoom maths versus 300 mil. And then your size comparison for the 35 to 100. The 40 to 150 is also completely weather sealed and dustproof, which was worth its weight in gold in Kenya. Also, both of the other zooms that I have are weather sealed as well, which is lovely. 
there's a pro and a con to the next one and that is the manual clutch yes it's really handy if you for instance when you're shooting an animal and it's through branches and your autofocus is playing up you can just quickly change to manual focus and do it yourself the con of this true story whip your camera out of your camera bag because something cool is happening say an elephant at sunset and the manual clutch is accidentally engaged you you know you're like oh my god my camera is in manual focus is it the dial on the camera no oh it's the lens and so this otherwise beautiful photograph turns into you taking photographs of an elephant having a dump <laughs> i have a love-hate relationship with the clutch i can see its benefits but it has thwarted me a few times <laughs> So I get asked this question a lot on this channel. Why micro four thirds? Why not APS-C? Why not full frame? Why not your phone? That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> One of the answers to that question is there are just some standout lenses on this system that only make sense on this system and make the system make sense. This is a 70 to 200 mil lens in full frame terms and I'm holding it like that. This is unique pretty much to the Micro Four Thirds system. There are some lenses that just make the system make sense and the 40 to 150 2.8 is one of them. I may make that into a full video because that's quite interesting. Conversation for later. So the 40 to 150 Olympus lens ticks all the boxes but one. And that is my bugbear with a lot of Olympus lenses and it's not blooming stabilised. It's not stabilised and it annoys me. There's only like three or four lenses in the Olympus system that are even stabilised. It is something that I've spoke about in the past on this channel, shall not go into it, it's just different brands do things differently. On the Lumix system, everything pretty much, if it's telephoto or super telephoto, is stabilised. And you may say, well, if this was uh, stabilised, then it would be much bigger. But this is stabilised. And this is stabilised. Yeah, different brands do different things, but I wish it was blooming stabilised. But on the plus side, this lens does have a feature that I very much value, and it's one of only seven Olympus lenses that do, and that is it will allow the OM-1 to shoot in the 50 frames per second pro capture mode. So the one where you half press the shutter, the action happens, and then you press the shutter and it'll capture a second before really really handy for birds in flight the autofocus is so sticky when you shoot in the burst modes and i've got some very nice photographs using that mode with this lens so the olympus 40 to 150 still goes new for around 1200 pounds i bought mine from mpb the sponsor of this week's video for a damn good price like new still in the box with a six month warranty for £689. Now I am bad at maths, but that's like a 400, 500 quid discount. So I can and did spend the extra money on getting the GX8 from them as well. Simple equation, I'm a simple woman. Cheaper price, more cameras, happy Emily. And that is the joy of buying used. This is why I love MPB and I shout about them from the rooftops because I do think people can genuinely get loads of great bargains through them. So if you are looking at this lens or maybe some other ones that I have discussed in this video, check out MPB using the links below and see if you can grab yourself a bargain. So if you are looking to get a very versatile, very good in low light, very robust zoom lens, you can't go much wrong with this one. If you are looking for more extreme zoom, you have the 100 to 400, which is superb. I think it's the smallest lens in the world that allows you to access those focal lengths. And if you're just looking for something with a bit of zoom that's good for portraiture and good in low light, you've got this one. This one's got you covered. Reason 978 why I love micro four thirds, there's a choice for everyone because there's that many blooming lenses. Check out my 100 to 400 Mark II review. This is the Mark I, but there is a newer version that allows teleconverters and stuff, so you can get stupid amounts of zoom with that setup. Check out that video next. 